We did it. No more pesky one shots in pit 100 plus. And the best part, we didn't have to compromise damage for it. Behind me, an echo of Lily hitting, survival. Or a tier 2 explosion, no problem. We're tanking that. And the first thing we tried here was using a shield because that gives us 10% damage reduction. And surely with the damage blocked and the bonus life that the shield provides and everything, that should be enough to keep us alive. Big problem is the damage loss because we're having a 340% golem damage here and 4,000 max life, for example, on our two-handed weapon. And the one-handed sword is currently only having 103% golem damage. And since it gets multiplied a lot, we've been losing thousands and thousands of golem damage. So that's a bummer. Yes, we're in the city. That's another 25% missing still. The interesting part, we could move hardened bones to the shield and didn't have to compromise in any damaging aspect. Hell, we could even slam on the harlequin crest on top for the 20% bonus damage reduction because we didn't need hardened bones on our helmet. And yet against the bosses, we're getting slammed with one hits. And that was plenty annoying. During the normal dungeon push, it felt vastly safer. Without any barrier, we're still able to just stand in everything, walk into mobs. Nothing was hurting us. But at the bosses, the result wasn't what we're looking for. Now, a second simpler solution was just waiting around the corner. And that's, hey, why not use a focus? Because a focus can temper golem damage and still get the same attack speed, even add critical strike chance and cooldown reduction to the fray. That does sound pretty good. The more interesting part is it has another offensive tempering, which means I can actually join the offensive tempering for my amulet and then put hardened bones on it. Hardened bones is usually 25% and now it's 38% complete unconditional damage reduction, another 13%. And the cool part, since it's off our helmet now and on our amulet, and we didn't have to compromise a single offensive aspect because that's on our focus. We can actually slam on the Harlequin Crest for another 20% unconditional damage reduction. And why do I keep mentioning this unconditional damage reduction? Because against the boss echoes, against the end of the pit, if I decrepify the boss for 24% damage reduction, that doesn't help me. It doesn't reduce the damage of the boss echo. Right, the actual boss does less damage to you, but that damage is neglectable. You're still taking the same damage from the Echo. The same is as damage reduction from close, damage reduction from distance. All that kind of conditional damage reduction doesn't work. But your Fortify, 15%. Your Harlequin Crest with a 20. Your Amulet now with a 38%. That all does indeed work. And to go above and beyond, we change something in the Paragon board. Before we get to that, though, let's jump into a Tier 100 and I'll show you how we didn't actually lose clearing speed and how it does handle survival-wise. And for the people that don't have Harlequin Crest, there's another item they can use. And that would be Temerity. 80% barium and maximum life. Because if you don't have Harlequin Crest, then you can just move the aphotic aspect from your pants up to your helmet instead of hardened bones. And you get another, this is 40,000 life. This would give me 35,000 barium. Survival. Let's drink a health potion to bump us up to 49,000. And yes, if our focus had a greater life affix, we would have even more. Plus, both weapons upgraded. I think we're looking in the ballpark of 52, 54,000 currently with one potion, which feels very good. And again, the best part is zero compromise in any kind of damage. Because the golem damage multiplied up is roughly the same. I think right now I'm losing... I think right now I lost 400% because my weapons are not masterworked and yet seem like that, that, that explosion would have usually wrecked me. That, that explosion, despite 52,000 life from the dude, would usually take me straight away out. Like he stamps on the ground and I, I'm, I'm gone. But now I just stood in it because why wouldn't I? When we have the 15% damage reduction running from being fortified, we have the damage reduction from literally just having Harlequin Crest on. And the Hardened Bones is just damage reducing us. Oh, did we just survive one of those shadow things on the ground without even worrying? Yep, we did. It just makes it so much safer. You, you can play way less caring and still survive everything as you're farming for your materials. Obviously, as you go deeper into the pit, right, you, you might want to, like, you know, play play a bit more careful but hey i'm just trying to get material together I'm, I'm not trying to set like a new speed record right and that's the thing like we we don't want to have convenience here right we want to have the build that allows us to just literally survive and i mean frankly spoken if you suck 
that makes it way better for you because we're now getting the same levels of damage while essentially just being more survivally. And the interesting part is since we're more survivally right now, we could think about dropping the Blood Mist because usually we need the Blood Mist to sometimes get out of effect, sometimes get out of jail, sometimes be like, eh, this is kind of like a little bit iffy. But what we could do is we could actually drop now the Blood Mist and we could introduce back the Blight. And the Blight would add another 20% multiplicative damage, which then would take care of the damage that we actually did lose from swapping out the two-handed weapon and not having the big multiplier on the Blighted happening anymore. So that's amazing. And you know what? I actually noticed one thing. My weapon is not even having Blighted running. So I'm essentially not running my huge damage multiplier of 240% that I usually have that would still be 120% as I actually have it on my weapon. And yeah, I'm missing Blighted and I'm still able to actually blast through the dungeon like this here right now, correct? I mean, we're, we're, we're about like usually, usually looking at a four minute clear with Blighted. Uh, if, we, if we go very lucky and push very hard, it could be a sub four minute, but we're, we're actually, yeah almost at the boss right here with without having blighted going on that's that's kind of like an interesting <laughs> revelation to me right now <laughs> and yet yeah, we, we're just standing in the explosions of the stupid bloated corpses and we still haven't died now, but let me show you how it looks on the boss here against the boss we have this dude now that's here poison pool survival and we weren't even fortified would i stand in that one no i would probably not stand in that one because that is one of the highest damaging tier ones that will just shred you <laughs> no matter what you do. The only way I actually do survive that is by drinking the second potion to boost my HP up to almost 60k. Then that one doesn't kill me. But what about the Lilith now, right? I mean, at first, first we stood there just in one of her water pools, right? That didn't take us out. Then we're just standing AFK in him here again. That didn't take us out again. So we have way more leeway right now in this boss fight where... Well, in case we miss one of the not so easily telegraphed one, yeah. Okay, that's Lily now. Let's avoid this and then stand. Ah, oh, shit. Okay, we need to. We need her to come again. Again, I took damage from her pool. Right, we still survive. We're gonna be like probably getting hit by this one too, and we survived again. It's very convenient. I mean, we're doing currently 100% less damage or 120% multiplicative less damage. Don't forget about that. And yet, still, we're doing the boss really fast. So that's. That's actually fantastic. But now let's see that we get actually killed by Lilith. One interesting part I haven't mentioned is that you're summoning your dudes faster. So due to a one-handed weapon having an intrinsic better attack speed. Oh, okay. Let's stand in this. Oh, survival. <laughs> due to the one-handed weapon just attacking faster by nature, you're essentially just simply... Also, summoning skeletons even faster than ever before. Which means that if you need to summon those five now pesky little friends to get the 40% multiplier, well, you're whooping that out of your arms like there's no tomorrow, right? That's just that's just quick as hell. Point proven. More tankiness and more convenience. Just simply better. And an amulet with three greater affixes. That amulet being max life, damage, and critical strike chance. Not bad. Might be selling good on the marketplace. Let's put the Shadow Blight aspect back on and walk you through how everything looks right now and then reveal the Paragon changes. And with this, we'd have another 120 damage multiplicative bonus that would then speed up the boss fight to the old levels. Which brings us currently to a weapon with Golem damage and minion attack speed. And I have critical strike damage, damage, and maximum life on it. On the off end, we're having maximum life, a critical strike chance intelligence. You could have lucky hit chance on it, but the intelligence essentially boosts your damage more. So why not? Golem damage and minion attack speed. Interestingly enough, if the first minion attack speed is already enough for you for Frenzy Den, you could put Skeletal Mage's cast twice on this, diversifying your build even more, giving you a faster Shadow Blight upkeep because your mages are casting twice. Then on the pans, we're playing the Aphotic Aspect, currently Skeletal Mage Mastery, Armor, and Maximum Life, and a lucky hit to slow, freeze, or stun because that triggers very well with your Army of the Dead, providing you extra staggers. That gets followed up by the Gloves with Skeletal Mage Mastery for more DPS, Golem Damage. Golem Damage is very important because it does multiply upwards very nicely with your Golem Multiplier. 
and then corpse tendril size you do want attack speed on it critical strike chance helps you to crit all the time then on the chest we have the mastery and since i have a billion gold right now due to one rogue item trade mm -hmm. double greater affix ring lucky hit attack speed one billion gold fantastic I might be getting this finally up to plus six or seven because that will multiply out my golem damage even more. On this one, we have the Bloodgetter's Aspect, which does heal me consistently. Works very good with the damage reduction. And the 21% bonus damage I get, my minions get as well. Lastly, the Harlequin Crest. And again, the Harlequin Crest could as well be the Temerity. And if you do not have the Harlequin Crest or the Temerity, I recommend you to get it. Could then slam on another utility aspect like the hulking or give yourself undying where you heal on skill use or the protecting aspect for bubble potentially. None of these being obviously as good as having the Harlequin Crest or the Temerity would be. And on the amulet with the Hellbang Commander, we're running the Hardened Bones for the 38% bonus damage reduction on even more Ghoulam damage and ultimate cooldown reduction. With the rings running Ghoulam damage as well, and do not go for summoning damage. The summoning damage doesn't get multiplied up by your Ghoulam multiplier, leading to way less damage than you would have if you're going for the specific damage. Attack speed greater affix is a mandatory. The same goes for the other ring, and that one is currently playing the Frenzy Dead. So we're getting the 45% bonus attack speed on this one. And that is enough with all the attack speed on the rings and weapons to get us to the 100%. And on the other ring, we've been running the Unyielding Commander. The skills didn't change in any way. But as we said, you might want to consider playing Blight instead of simply Blood Mist again. So that would be just one, two points out and then slam that all into Blight so you would get the 20% damage multiplicative. Keep in mind that if you're playing Blight, you definitely want to have boots with Essence per second. Because if you don't have Booth or a chest with Essence per second, playing Blight just feels iffy because you're not having enough Essence from Grim Harvest. Currently, it would like this. One, two. Then we two all the four points out. Do two in here. One, two, three. Boom. And you even have two free roaming points that you could put in other things, like boosting up the Gloom again, because we're now actually playing a Shadow skill, and you might want to consider doing that. That being said, I generally prefer rocking the Blood Mist, because Blood Mist truly is still the oh shit. I would have died in that moment. I was standing very unfortunate. I got blocked in by things. It's just too nice to have. On the Paragon board, we begin with Amplify. For the bonus damage multiplicative against cursed enemies, and that works against bosses as well, into Corporal for the bonus movement speed and 10% physical bonus. Then still over into the left side for the maximum life. And our Essence Glyph giving us a 22% damage multiplier against enemies not healthy. While we're then moving into the hulking monstrosity with the debt razor, yes, debt razor is in here, and debt razor would boost every single node here to give us even more damage plus the rare node. Into the right side for the golem damage multiplier, which multiplies all our golem damage up in the send of death board. And lastly, we get the control. That's another 20% multiplicative on crowd controlled enemies. Plus, we're going into the co leader board, and you notice that we're not taking the damage reduction, useless. We're also not taking the Overlord, useless. That bonus damage is not really there. But what we're really having in here is the Undaunted, which gives us another 10% damage reduction the more Fortify you have. And since the Army of the Dead always fortifies it up, we have the 15% damage reduction of Fortify, plus another unconditional damage reduction that is only bound to myself, but not bound to our enemies and works. Ladies and gentlemen, what do you think? Is that your playstyle now, Sword and... Focus giving you more damage than ever? Or are you rather going for that good old two-handed slammer build that has now cleared the tier 115 dungeon? That being said, I think this could achieve exactly the same. But the master worked those weapons up 12 times to give it a try. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.